Over the last 30 years, there have been thousands of reported sightings of unidentified flying objects over the British Isles. My first thoughts were, wow, what was that? You think I'm bloody daft, but this is a UFO. In the summer of 2008, reports of flying saucers and other crafts were capturing the headlines again. Over the years, numerous eyewitnesses, including military personnel, police officers and experienced airline pilots have testified to seeing strange lights in the sky and other mysterious phenomena. Very bright yellow object. It was uh, nothing like an airplane that I'd ever seen before. It's the brightest light I've ever seen in my life. We could offer no explanation. Many of these UFO sightings remain unexplained to this day. But what or who were they? Could they really be evidence of extraterrestrial life? I thought, what's that? I couldn't believe my eyes. Tonight, we hear firsthand from those who witnessed them and examine the truth behind some of Britain's most celebrated UFO sightings. At the beginning of 1980, Todmorden was a little-known West Yorkshire mill town. But before the year's end, the town would be associated with one of the strangest stories in British UFO history. It was something you only read about or seen on television. And suddenly, it's there. If you think of a double-decker bus sideways, that's how big it was. And he wasn't the sort of person that would suddenly say something, you know, that hadn't happened. So, I, I believed him. I felt quite safe in the police car. Now, if somebody got out of it, I'd be bloody scared. The story of a young Yorkshire police officer sighting of an unidentified object became headline news. I believe Alan Godfrey's telling the truth. If he's lying, he deserves an Oscar. Almost 30 years later, his experience has become part of UFO folklore. I've been a journalist for 50 years and covered quite a few rather strange stories. But the Alan Godfrey story is undoubtedly the most astonishing thing I ever covered. In 1980, Alan Godfrey had been a police officer in the Todmorden area for six years. On the night of the 28th of November, he claims to have witnessed something extraordinary. We had got radio messages uh, from our control room that uh, people were reporting seeing uh, a small herd of cows roaming around a local council estate. And as I'm going up Burnley Road, I could see in the distance, about five or six hundred yards up the road, something that had skidded. Well, I thought it was a staff bus that had skidded across the road for some reason. Uh, whatever it was, I decided to go and investigate. So I'm driving towards this object, and I got within about 20 yards, and there it was. An object, nuts and bolts, hovering above the road surface. It was shaped in a diamond shape, and the bottom flange was rotating. The top half appeared to be stationary. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I, what would you do? Well, if it were you, you'd probably ring the police up. But in my case, I'm already there, so I thought I'd radio our control room. Now, control. with two radios, we've got a VHF, which is the car radio, and UHF, which is the personal radio. I tried both, and none of them had worked. Come in control. It was eerily silent. That really does stick in my mind, that. That was really eerily silent. And for some reason, I don't know why, I picked my clipboard up and started to draw it. I made a quick sketch. So it's there. Rather than me, it's there, it's black and white. Although he'd made a sketch, Alan Godfrey's story would ultimately centre around what happened next. Now, with black and white... <laughs> 
and I'm at the other side of it, driving. Quick glance at mirror, it's not there. I got out of the car. The road surface was whirlpool dry, like a spinning object would make, you know. With all these leaves and branches and what have you. You could see an area of, of road surface that wasn't like the other. It was the others were wet, this was dry. Unsure of what had happened to him, PC Godfrey drove straight back to the police station in Todmorden. When Alan came into the police station, he was very agitated. I says to him, uh, you'll never guess what I've just seen, you know. You won't believe what I've just seen. At first, you know, you think it's totally outrageous, you know, but I've no reason to doubt him. I mean, I've, I've known him for a long time and we know each other really well, and I've no reason to doubt what he said. But the night still had one more surprise left. As Alan Godfrey ended his shift, he noticed something else he couldn't explain. There was approximately 30, 35 minutes missing that couldn't be accounted for. For me, leaving the police station to come in back. To me, I'd only been away 15 minutes. I would have been away approximately 45, 50 minutes. What Alan Godfrey claimed to have experienced was strange enough, but he wasn't alone in witnessing unusual phenomena that night. PC Godfrey had no rational explanation for what he'd seen, or for what he discovered later. I had this irritating itch on my foot. The boot on my left foot was split. If that's the sole of the... Of the, of the it was split that way. I have no idea why they were split, but when I took it off, I removed my sock, and it was on the instep of my foot, and it was a round circle like that, red. And it was very, very itchy. It wasn't sore, but it was very, very itchy. At work the following day, Alan Godfrey received some surprising news. He hadn't been the only officer who claimed to have seen something strange the previous night. I came on duty and there was an inspector awaiting to see me. I went into the inspector's office and he then informed me that uh, I wasn't alone, that three police officers in Halifax, in fact, had had some sort of an encounter the same night. And he was putting a report together and he wanted a statement of me. Coming out of the, the inspector's office thinking, yeah, Right on. Twelve miles from Todmorden, on the moors above Halifax, PCs John Porter, Howard Turnpenny and Julie Baxter had been looking for stolen motorbikes. What they witnessed compelled them to make an official report. We packed up, got out, walked down over the fields towards the quays, I mean, nearly reached the quarries, and then something, not, nothing verbally, but something told us to turn. And we turned and just stood. And in the sky was a very cold, and I would describe it as a cold steel blue light. Not flashing, but pulsating. And the hairs on my arms and my neck just stood up. I cannot tell you in all honesty how big this thing was because there was no, no definite shape to it other than a pulsating steel blue ball. But wherever it went, wherever it went, it was very, very fast. As fast as I'm moving my hand now. A second, a second, a second, a second. And that's how fast it moved with no noise. Delta 4-0 to Halifax Control. I tried to speak to Halifax on the radio. Nothing. Absolutely dead. I wasn't frightened, I was intrigued as to what this was. But for WPC Julie Baxter, the experience proved unsettling. Julie was scared. There's no doubt about it. She made her feelings very plain. Scared. Howard was like me, he wanted to know what it was. He wanted to see this thing. And for no reason, it shot off his big overhead heart. 
towards Todbedin. Whatever it was, was not of... I can't explain whatever of our making. It was something completely alien to my understanding. And the night was getting even stranger. Two traffic officers on the moors near Littleborough, 12 miles from both Alan Godfrey and the Halifax patrol, reported seeing a bright pulsating sphere hovering between two electricity pylons before it sped off over the hills. In all, six separate police officers had witnessed strange phenomena that night.